Good morning, friends. We're here at Pirates Cove Marina, and choosing a boat can be extremely tough. If you're in the market for a new boat, there's so many things you have to consider and think about, but we're gonna share the top reasons in today's video why we chose this Blackwell 40 Foot Express, what we named Speechless. We're gonna to explain to you why we chose this boat and what attracted us to it. Okay, so choosing a boat is difficult. I mean, it is for me anyway, because there's never the perfect boat. It's a give and take situation. It's always a catch-22 in my opinion. And when Mark and I were looking for boats, and we did a video on how we found this particular boat, which is really exciting, you gotta check it out. But we went back and forth on boats. I mean, we went all over the East Coast and by chance we just happened to find this one and i'm going to give you today the main reasons why we chose this boat i mean we both saw it we both fell right in love with it and uh, i'm going to go over some of the reasons that we did number one is probably the beam width and i'm going to take that back because number one was the looks i mean she caught her eye from you know 500 yards away and it was just the most beautiful express boat that either of us had laid our eyes on. And upon further inspection, we noticed the beam width. And uh, back here in the cockpit and in the bridge area, she's wide. I mean, you can walk by each other and it's not a lot of obstruction around, you know, she's just, it's wide. But with that width comes, it has more of a tendency you know, when, she, when she's running, the waves have more of an effect on her roll. And uh, a lot of boats that are super wide do not ride very good. I know I have a center console, she's got a DB and she's super narrow and she rides really good. But, you know, like I said, with boats, it's a catch-22. So those are the first two reasons. You know, look, she's beautiful, and to beam with. So reason number three, we learned it was a black well which is a local boat builder right down here in Wanchi. They have a very good name. It's a family owned, family operated business. When you buy a Blackwell boat, you become part of the Blackwell family. And to me, that is so appealing because you're never on your own. If you ever have a problem, ever have a question, all you have to do is call Blackwell Boat Works. They're always willing to help and they build a quality boat. I mean, the first sea trial I took on this boat, I had hardly ever been on a boat where you hit a wave, you didn't hear a rattle or squeak or something like that. Not on this thing, she's just solid. I mean, it's just like riding on the water on a brick. It's, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. So reason number four here was the soft goods package that it has and soft good is another term for cushions curtains you know things like that goods that are soft on here and uh, i immediately noticed the craftsmanship that was put into all of the soft goods on this boat and learning after we bought the boat i became really good friends with the guy that did all the upholstery work. His name is Matt Penny, and uh, he's out of Beaufort. He has a company called Salty Penny Canvas. Phenomenal work. I mean, just the craftsmanship, the customer service, it's just, and he's an all around, you know, hell of a good guy. And uh, you can call him and talk to him for hours. You know, it's just, he's, and you, you don't, you haven't even known him for years. He's just a, a, a cool cat, but he is a true craftsman. Just the curtain enclosure alone is like an eighteen to twenty thousand dollar package. It's just it's crazy, and you know this the, these curtains are an eighty gauge modified acrylic, and it's you know it's a really good material, and um, it's durable. It holds up well. It you have to be super careful with it because cold temperatures. If you bend it really bad, it will crack but it's durable, it holds up. And uh, I try to take really good care of these curtains. But anyway, 
that was one of the, that was one of the reasons. You know, another reason was all of these nice seating areas up here, and you know the helm chair is really nice. Um, just a lot of features that Matt Penny and the previous owner put into this boat that you know made it pop. And just like it's like this uh, this cup holder slash armrest right here. This is a seven hundred and fifty dollar piece. You know, this costs seven hundred and fifty dollars. So you can tell that you know no price, no expense was spared when they were setting this boat up, and that's what I loved about it. All right, so all of these cushions are made from a material. It's Sunbrella Horizon Mono, and that is the top of the line. I mean, vinyl for marine application that you can pretty much get. And, and one part that that I have learned is they have an outstanding warranty. And uh, one of the appealing warranties that they have is a three-year warranty against pinking, which pinking is, if you've ever seen a white cushion and it appears to be pink, the old myth is that some block got on it or something like that. Well, that's not the case. Pinking is actually a mold and fungus that grows on the inside of the, the vinyl. And when it, the cushion turns pink on the outside, it's too late. I mean, it, that mold and mildew, whatever it is, has come through the material and there's no getting it out. So one of the things that Sunbrella offers, they have, you know, a, a, their product does not allow that to happen on the backside. So that's one good thing about the Sunbrella. So anyway, we had, it had about seven seven thousand five hundred dollars worth of just cushions and you know some umbrella material on here and it, it's just it looks amazing he did a really good job one thing that was very appealing to us when we found this boat the low engine hours i believe they had 1296 hours on these engines original hours on these engines now in the grand scheme of diesel engines, that is not a lot. And if you think about it, every day that you use this boat, you put 12 hours on it. It's, uh, it's not a lot of days fishing. So that was very, you know, promise, promising for us to see that, uh, and appealing for us to see that the low engine hours, we knew they hadn't been used a lot, but that also can play as a double-edged sword because, you know, engines are made to then be run and um, in the marine environment things that are not used in a constant manner tend to not work well so uh, you know you've got to take all those things into your decision making you use your judgment on that another thing that really made this boat pop in our eyes was the tower i mean we had been all over seen all kinds of boats seen all kinds of ugly towers this tower it's almost like it grew on the boat. It just, like it was made for it, and it was, but there's a guy down in Beaufort, North Carolina, which is where we bought this boat. His name is Eric Braswell. He has a company, EBW Incorporated, and uh, he's an aluminum welder, and he spared no expense at building this top for the previous owner. It was put on, I think, about a year before we bought the boat, and once again, a true craftsman. I just cannot say enough. The whole frame is out of two inch anodized uh, brushed aluminum and uh, he just did an, an, a phenomenal job. Now, beings we're talking about things that drew us to this boat and choosing your boat, this tower, it takes a lot of time to clean it. And you've got to keep your aluminum clean because if not, it'll pit and corrode. That is one thing I do not like, but I love the tower. I love the looks of it. Now, with that being said, a tower like this is pretty expensive. It takes two men about 200 hours, 200 man hours to build a tower like this. And back before materials skyrocketed and everything, a tower like this would probably cost you $75,000. Well, in today's market, it's probably on up there around $125,000 to $150,000. By the time you add in all the fiberglass tops, the helm pile up top, it's just, it's crazy expensive. Another reason why 
we chose this boat and why it worked for us. The fuel economy. It's a 40 foot boat. All right, it has two yam bars in it. It's a 22 knot cruise, 23 knot cruise boat, okay? So, we don't have a big budget to go fishing. So we all, we had to keep that in mind, fuel consumption. Having a boat like this is no good if you can't afford to put fuel in. So that was one of our top priorities when we were shopping for boats, the fuel economy. This boat has twin Yamar 465s in it. And on an average day out of Pirate's Cove, we'll go fishing nine miles to the inlet. We'll normally run anywhere from 30 to 40 miles offshore. Come back in, <clears throat> 40 miles, 30 to 40 miles, nine miles back from the inlet to the marina. We burn 160 to 190 gallons of fuel every trip. Now, that's a little expensive if you think about it, but if you think about some of these 60 footers that are burning 250 to 300 gallons a day, and you know, that's where it really adds up. But fuel economy is what really, you know, helped us make our decision on this boat. Yes, it's a 40 foot boat, but it is the perfect size for us. Another reason why we chose this boat is because it's laid out perfectly. It has a helm station downstairs, right here along with all the bench seating on the side. So we're all learning here together. And that way the captain can be a part of the fishing experience. He is not separated. If we have a charter guest on here, they feel close to the captain and the crew. You know, you're not isolated. You can carry on a conversation. It's just, a, it's a good setup. It was a good match for us, you know, because we want to have a very interactive experience, you know, with the people we have on this boat. So I, you know, a lot of days I do fish up in the tower, but that's strictly just because it, it creates more catches for the boat. You know, but a lot of days I like being down here, you know, conversating and, and being with the guests we have on the boat. This boat is actually a 2001. And, um, you know, that's a touch over 20 years old. But we and anybody that comes and sees the boat, we tell them what year it is, they're just blown away because it's so clean. Marks and I love a clean appearance on a boat. It's one thing we have in common, one great quality, and it works for us. Now, we got on the boat and went down to the cabin, we were kind of shocked because the whole cabin was unfinished. And I'm not exactly sure what state it was in prior to us seeing the boat, but it was pretty much gutted and uh, you know needed to be completely redone, which just so happens, I'm a pretty good carpenter. So that actually appealed to us because I could get down there, put my touch on some things. Yes, it has been a job and hopefully there's gonna be a video on that one day. But last winter I worked on it all winter and this winter, hopefully a couple months I'll have it finished up, but we'll keep you posted on that. So that was another reason why we chose this boat. It almost seems like I'm rambling on, but this boat has so many great qualities that I, I, mean, I could just sit here and talk about it all day. But there's a few other highlights that I want to hit. So all of the boxes back there, fish boxes, mezzanine coolers, uh, these storage boxes, it's amazing the craftsmanship these fellows put into this thing. They're all insulated stainless on the inside, stainless line boxes, which is great for keeping them clean. You know, it's just, there's no white paint down there to stain and all that. And that was very appealing to us. And another thing back there in the cockpit area that was very appealing to us was mezzanine seating. And uh, where you can actually sit back there and look facing the stern and watch the spread. Because I don't know about you, but I, I can't keep my eyes off the spread. You know, because it's just, if you look away, it seems like something happens right there. And um, I mean, like I say, I could go on and on all day long why we chose this boat. I mean, I love this boat, but it does have some downfalls. <clears throat> so let's talk about a few of them. I would say the thing that I do not like about this boat the most is it's not a great head sea boat, but like I explained, everything is a catch 22. We have that width and the width carries up front. So it gives you a lot of room up there in the cabin, but it doesn't necessarily 
cut through the waves and shear them off. Yes, yeah, she has a lot of flair, but she's also pretty wide up front. So, you know, it, it kind of stays up on top of the waves instead of cutting straight through them. You know, it's not a it's it's not a deal breaker for me because you know you can slow down, and we're not going to go out there in days where it's terribly rough anyway. But another thing that I dislike about this boat, <clears throat> which <clears throat> I love it and hate it, and you're going to find that with a lot of boats, is the teak cover boards in the back. When they are sanded and old, it is the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. But it is a job to keep them like that. You just have to, you have to sit there and think, how much time do I have to put in a boat like this? Because you can put oil on that every week if you want it to look pristine. I mean, you, you can acid wash it and oil it up every week. But <clears throat> if you only have, you know, one day a weekend where you can come down and run and hop on your boat and go, you don't necessarily need a boat with, you know, nice looking woodwork on it. You want something that's, you know, white, painted, you know, or straight up fiberglass, so it's easy to take care of. The more woodwork you have on a boat, which they call bright work, the more maintenance and everything it requires. It's an amazing amount of time that it takes to maintain one of these boats. So another thing you really need to consider if you're looking for an offshore boat is rod storage. It's one thing I was so blinded by the beauty of this boat and even if I'd have thought about it, I still wouldn't have changed my mind about it. But this boat does not have a lot of rod storage. And um, at any given point, I mean, you're going to need nine, well, for a minimum spread, you're going to need seven, you know, 50 class for your tunas. You're going to need another six 30 class rods for your white marlin rods, you know, 20 to 30 pound class. You want to keep some spinning rods on the hand, uh, you know, so if the tunas are airing out, you can, you know, throw some poppers at them or something like that. And then you have to have some bailing rods for your dolphin, which a lot of these rods I'm talking about can double. But, you know, me being who I am, I like to have everything set up and ready. So, you know, your, your 30, 30 pound class, you know, Marlin rods are going to have, you know, 30 pound mono on them. And, uh, you know, that's, it's okay for bailing rods, but me, I would rather have, you know, some braided line on my bailing rod just because it's for ease of use. And uh, my casting rods, especially, I want braid on them. So, um, you know, and then if you're gonna bluefin fish, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna need some 130 class rods. So uh, that's a lot of gear and tackle that goes along with it that you have to have a place to put. And uh, so just keep that in mind also when you're looking for your next boat. I mean, like I say, I could go on and on for days and days about the things that I love about this boat. It's got a nice fighting chair, you know what I mean? Beautiful, almost new outriggers. It fishes great. I mean, I could go on and on and on all day long. Another thing I do not like is when you're up in the tower, you can't, you know, like a bridge boat, you can run your long riggers and your shotgun rods out of the bridge. Well, when you're up in the tower on this boat, you're pretty much out of the game. You're just the captain, you're the boat driver. You know what I mean? Which is a great thing, but you know, you don't ever get to hook a fish, hold a rod, you know, it's just, it's one of those things that I really enjoy. You know, there's something about when that rigger pops out, he doesn't come tight. All of a sudden you reach over there and you free spool that rod, twitch it a couple times, jerk it, jig it a couple times, and that fish comes back and hits it right out of your hand. I mean, that's that's one thing I really do miss from, you know, being down here in the cockpit or, you know, being on a bridge boat. But, uh, you know, like I say, every boat has its gives and its takes. But overall, I am very satisfied with this boat. I know Marcus is very satisfied with this boat. You just have to consider a lot of things when you're boat shopping you know what i mean but i would i would say the main thing is fuel economy is a big deal because if you can't afford to put fuel in the boat to go fishing there's no sense in having you know a boat like this time is a big factor how much time do you have to maintain a boat like this change oil you know keep up on all the maintenance keep it clean work on anything that might go wrong it's a lot of factors so my advice to you would be, if you're boat shopping, sit down and make a list, because this is what Marks and I did. Made a list of things that was important to us. And we went and we saw lots of boats. 
a lot of the boats check, you know, 10 or 15 of our 20 item checklists. But this boat almost checked every one of our, you know, our, our marks on our paper that we wanted. And there was not a question in our minds that this was the boat for us. So hopefully we'll have for many years. Hopefully you'll be seeing a lot of videos on this boat. And until next time, my friends, as Marcus says, stay salty.